Well, we're going to uh, take a little turn. You know, our Easter message was the life of Jesus. But I think we're going to take a little bit of a turn just because the Lord has been dealing with me um, this morning about a subject. And I believe some people are really needing this subject. So we're going to dive right into it. We're going to be talking about strength today. And if you're watching today, God wants you strong. If you're here, God wants you strong, spiritually strong. And not that many people talk about spiritual strength. When I was a Buddhism, worshiping all the things, doing my incense, doing everything, I thought I had strength, but not spiritual strength. I had mental strength. And that's what we have to watch out for because we're not a mind. We are a spirit. Hallelujah, but David, you're just diving right in. <laughs> but we're going to talk today on how to keep your spirit strong. I said, well, how to keep your spirit strong. Yes. How to keep your spirit strong. Yes. How to keep your spirit strong. Yes. You need your spirit strong. And we're going to go over some scriptures today because you're going to see by the word of God how important it is to keep your spirit strong. But let's do our confession this morning. We're going to go over, this is what we say every week because we are believers. Say this after me. I'm quick. I'm sharp. I'm good looking. I'm healed. I'm very rich and I'm a major blessing. And that's what God's word tells us that we are. We're going to go over to Proverbs chapter 18. And I'm going to talk a little bit about strength of spirit. Because when you go back to New Numbers chapter 13 and 14, it talked about the children of Israel. Remember that? And right away, you can see who had a weak spirit and who had a strong spirit. These are the children of Israel. Moses tells the 12 spies to go into the land. And here they go. They're going into the land. And then they come back. And one has a report of, man, we're just not going to be able to make it. These are giants. It's just not going to happen. It's not going to happen in any way, shape, or form. What kind of spirit is that? And the other spirit was this, was Caleb and Joshua said, we could take the land. Let's go in right now. Amen. You know, even in your own life, for your own business, your own ministry, your own family, people will talk. When you say your vision and, and they try to talk you down your vision, that just shows how spiritually strong or weak they are. Come on, David. Come on. If we say we're believing for buildings and houses and lands, come on, and equipment, so what we say every week, that's what we're believing for. And if someone goes, well, that's just too big. Well, it just shows where we're at spiritually. And I don't mean to step on so many toes, but I take this message seriously. I have a lot of fun. And maybe next week you're going to have a lot more fun. Every week I have fun up here. And every week we have fun as believers. We need to have fun in our lives. But when it comes to spiritual strength, come on now. We want to be strong spiritually. And this verse right here, we're going to look at it. And this is Proverbs 18, 14 says a whole mouthful. It says this, the strong spirit of a man, or you could say woman, sustains him or her in bodily pain or in trouble. But a weak or broken spirit, who can raise up or bear? I'm going to say it again. The strong spirit of a man sustains them in bodily pain or in trouble. The strength of your spirit determines, I'm not going to get ahead of myself, but determines a lot in our lives. People don't see the value of the Bible. People don't see the value of the Word of God in their lives. They don't see the reality and power it can do and give them in their lives. If they did, yeah, let me just say this. Come on, help me, Lord. When I was a Buddhist and I would chant for six hours a day and do everything I needed to do, that, if that diligence ever comes in the church and we see the church doing what some of these other religions are doing, that's dead. they're dead. I'm telling you, they're dead. Yeah. I've studied the Quran. I can quote the Quran. I can quote, you know, uh, Confucius. I can quote um, Shakyamuni Buddha. I can quote all these different people, but they're spiritually dead. Come on, guys. I said they're spiritually dead, and I'm not afraid of it. Only one man walked this earth, and he said there's only one way to the Father, and that's Jesus Christ. But if the church would wake up and do the diligence and do the praying and do the studying, we could win the world like that. Amen? Amen? This is a really strong message today. Ha <laughs> I better laugh a little bit and smile while I'm teaching it, huh? <laughs> 
If people don't see the need of it and they won't get in the word of God. And this is the key to spiritual strength. People don't realize what's happening is their spirit is growing weaker day by day because they're not feeding their spirit. People make such a huge deal about the brain. And believe me, I can go off on this because that's all I thought was about the brain. I was perfect atheists all my life, pretty much all my life. People make a huge, huge deal about the brain, saying all the inventions of man and science and developments have come out, and those two or three pounds of gray matter on top of our heads is what it's all about. Absolutely not. You are not a brain. You are a spirit. When your spirit is weaker, does it affect your body? Absolutely. The weaker your spirit is, the weaker your immune system is going to be. The weaker the electrical and chemical energy that goes into your heart, brain, and lungs is going to be. I can tell. I, last year, I didn't do my, my daily getting in the word and confessions, and I felt kind of druggity, drug, 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 going through the mud. <laughs> Hallelujah. What if your spirit gets built up? What if your spirit gets strong and infused with life? Come on now. Is it going to affect your body? Yes. The Bible says so. The life that's in your flesh comes from the inside, from your heart, and from your spirit. Life comes through our spirit. I'll tell you what, if my spirit left my body, it would just fall on the floor. We have to remember that we are spirits first. We're all going to leave here one day. I just got a newsflash. We're all going to leave this earth someday. All of us. We're going to leave by our spirits, not our bodies, not our minds, not our wills, not our, our spirits. Amen. Proverbs 4.23 says this, uh, what, keep and guard your what? Your heart, your spirit with all vigilance. for above all guard your heart for out of it flow the springs of life. Out of it flow the springs of light. Out of your heart flow the springs of life. Out of your heart flow the springs of life. The only reason your eyelids are moving and your heart is beating is because you're in a body. Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> you're not a body. You are in a body. This is all going to be about strength, spiritual strength. We're talking about spiritual strength. We're going to get right into it. You're not just a brain. You have a brain. You're not just a mind. You have a mind. You are a spirit. A spirit needs spirit food. Spirits need to be fed and nourished and to make your spirit strong. Amen. Now, I, I, there's so many different directions. Believe with me because I want to say the right things today. Your spirit is so important to keep strong. And we're going to see three things today. We're going to go through them very quickly. And, 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 and you are a spirit. You live in a soul and you have a body. The Bible talks about it. Amen? And study out that, that whole subject. We even have a song. I have a spirit. I am a spirit. That has a soul that lives in a body. It's a kid's song. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> but listen, number one, we need to eat the right spiritual food. I want to camp on number three today. But number one, we need to eat the right spiritual food. Romans 10.10 10 says, With the heart one believes unto righteousness. With the heart one believes. 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 With the heart, one believes. With the heart, one believes. Why are you saying so much? With the heart, one believes. With the heart, not with the head. With the heart, one believes. Amen? With the heart, one believes. Boy, this is a good subject. I can tell. <laughs> with the heart, one believes unto righteousness. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. With the heart, one believes with the heart 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 
One believe with the heart. One believes unto righteousness. Unto the heart, you are a spirit. Everything comes out of your heart. That's where love comes from. That's where everything comes out of our hearts. With the heart, one believes unto righteousness. With the mouth, confession is made into salvation. And you were so right, the Lord, this morning when you said this was going to be more of a serious message. <laughs> With the heart, one believes. You got to get that. With the heart, one believes. Jesus was big on this. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Where your treasure is, there your heart is also. It's a big deal, guys. We need to eat the right spiritual food. And I'm not going to camp on that. We know it's good, solid faith teaching. Teaching, not a, just teaching that has some guts to it, some faith to it, some nourishment. So when you listen to it, it's not just blah, 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 blah. It is something that has faith that can put inside you, that can strengthen you. Number two, we need to exercise spiritually. <laughs> this is going to go real big, I can tell. <laughs> well, I don't like to exercise at all. <laughs> How do you exercise spiritually? Joel has a good message on this. Joel says this, how to exercise spiritually. He says, let the weak say, I am strong. I know, I can feel it. Let the weak, let the weak, let the weak, if I'm weak, I'm weak. Yeah. No. Spiritual exercise right here. Let the weak say, I am strong. Wow, this is cool. Let the weak say, I am strong. So many people are focused on the problem and not the solution. You around people that always talk the problem? You have some people around you that always talk the problem? And you're like, why are they always talking the problem? I like solutions. I'm a solution guy. I want results. Amen? And so I know that for me, when I'm tired, sometimes it comes out of my mouth and I've got to say, Phew, I'm tired. Man, I need some rest and I might need some rest, but I'm not going to keep saying it for an hour or thinking it for an hour. Amen? One of the best ways to exercise spiritually is with your confession or your words and what you say. How did you get born again? How did you receive Jesus Christ? You believed with your heart and you said it with your mouth. Speaking in tongues is good spiritual exercise. Praising and worshiping God is good spiritual exercise. Every time you're exercising faith, you're exercising your spirit. When you're walking in love, you're exercising your spirit. When you're walking in joy, you're exercising your spirit. When you're walking in all the fruit of the spirit, you're exercising your spirit. This doesn't come easy, guys. Sometimes you don't want to walk in love. Sometimes you don't want to just say, hey, I'm happy. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but you can do all of these things and still be weak. And this is this is the point I want to come to today. Today I want to talk and this is all this was for right now. I want to talk about what is draining you in your life. Because you can I could teach you how to stay strong and we're going to do a little exercise in a second to strengthen your spirit. But if you aren't plugging up the drains, if I put water in a bathtub or if I put water, we had a big cistern in our farm, in our ranch, this big, it's about way bigger than this room. It's full of water for all of our horses and all of the animals we had on the farm and for all the farming things we did and all the corn and all the alfalfa and everything. But if I didn't have a plug in that thing because it was, it was, it was above ground, if I, if I would have pulled the plug out, something's draining it. If I keep putting water in the bathtub and I don't plug the drain, you probably think I'm stupid. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm filling up the bathtub. You're not filling it up because there's a drain. And we have to watch the drains that are in our life because fear will drain you. Worry will drain you. And the devil knows this, guys. I'll say it again. Fear will drain you. Worry will drain you. We weren't made to carry fear. We weren't made to carry worry. We weren't made to carry concern. We weren't even made to carry, we weren't even made to carry sickness and disease. Amen? 
Fear will drain you. Worry will drain you. You can sit in a chair and worry about something. And it's like someone pulled a plug on your spiritual energy. It'll drain right out of you. You ever sit there in the chair and like 30 minutes has went by and all you're thinking about all is this problem? And then you, oh, I'm just so tired today. I don't know what's going on with my body. I'm just so tired. You just wore yourself out worrying about something. Yep. Another drain. Well, I'll just, I'll just stand that for a second. Worry is a big one. I said worry is a big one. The Bible talks about casting all of our cares upon him. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, he is, he, we are made to be his kids. And we are made for him to take good care of us. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Another drain is too many involvements. I had to deal with this one. Still have to deal with one of these. Another drain is too many involvements. Take it from experience. Too many involvements, too many activities, doing all kinds of things the Lord never told you to do. Running here, running there, doing this, staying on the phone all day, doing nothing really. You're doing everything that everyone else asked you to do. It's a, that's a big one. That was the hardest thing because I'm such a helper. And if people that really know me, I'm a servant. I'll do whatever it takes. I'll give you the shirt off my back. I'll do whatever it takes. I'll wear myself out to help you. But I had to learn the hard way on that one. I had to say this. Everybody say this. No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Might have been hard for some of you to say. <laughs> You can say it in a loving way, though. You're doing everything. I'm going to back up and say these things again. Too many involvements, too many activities, doing all kinds of things the Lord never told you to do. You're running here, you're running there, doing this, staying on the phone all day about nothing. You're doing everything that everyone asks you to do. You're getting involved in every project and every program. It will wear you out. It won't be the Lord's fault. He didn't tell you to do it. Big scripture for me in my life, except the Lord build the house, they are going to labor in vain that build it. And people get frustrated for me because I want to pray something out first before I walk it out. It's important for me to know that I am walking the way the Lord wants me to walk. I think it's good for everybody to hear this. We get, we get offers to come to, we've had offers to go to Pakistan, India, Africa, where else? A bunch of other places in the world. I, I, and, and one guy, he, I'm not going to say what country he's from right now, but um, I feel like they're, they're, they're really pressuring us to come. And I'll tell you what, except the Lord build the house, they're going to labor in vain to build it. I want to be right where God wants me to be because the grace, the ability, the anointing, the finances, everything will be there for me. Come on. <laughs> I've been out of the will of God half of my life before I came to Jesus Christ. I don't want to go back. <laughs> It'll wear you out. It won't be the Lord's fault. He didn't tell you to do it. You didn't even ask him whether you should do it or not. You just did it. It will drain you and wear you out. We all need this, guys. It's a fresh anointing, a fresh way to get back with God, a fresh way to see things differently. And he loves you coming to him. And he'll say, nope, you got to get rid of this, or you got to get rid of that, or you got to get rid of this, or, or you need to do this. So you know what? You're doing too much over here. You better, that's not really going anywhere. I see so many people doing stuff, and I have to, I have to talk to myself about it. I see so many people doing stuff that's not going to go anywhere. It's not going to prosper them. I've seen people, you've seen them in your life, 10, 20, 30 years down the road. They're still doing the same, same person is still taking advantage of them. Oh, I stepped on some toes now. God wants you to be strong. Amen? One of the biggest drains in our life is arguing and strife. Oh, David, drop the mic and leave. Yes! <laughs> You can read the whole Bible, pray in tongues for eight hours, and get so built up you feel like you're floating around. But then you get in an argument with somebody and you fuss, an intense heated argument for five minutes, just five minutes, and it feels like you've been totally drained. Why is that? Why is that? You feel like you're so weak you can barely stand up, strife, Anger, different situations will totally drain you, and the devil knows this. If he can keep you in strife all the time, 
and you're not feeding your spirit either, it won't take long till you're weak and easy prey for anything that comes down the road. That's why love and walking in love is so important, guys. It's not easy sometimes, but it's not a love suggestion. It's the love commandment to love one another. Amen. Especially if you're a little bit more mature. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, that goes over big. <laughs> you don't have to fight or fuss with people because it, it just takes two people to get upset. Just don't be the person that gets upset. And I know it's hard. I know it's hard. Believe me, I know it's hard. And I think we all have experience in this area. But we, that's where we have to back up. We have to take a couple steps back and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that to that person. Um, please forgive me. I'm going to go restore that relationship, whether they yell at me or not. <laughs> Walking in love keeps you spiritually strong. Amen. I said, amen. amen, spiritually strong. Let's dive right into it because I don't know how much time I have left. I think I probably went through everything already. But listen, we need to be exercising and getting a strong spirit. And there's some things here and I just want to make sure that I'm clarifying everything. I'm going to say this. I can say this a thousand times. Some people won't hear it. Some people will hear it. A strong spirit will get you to where God wants you to be. But a weak spirit won't get you where God wants you to be. And this is diligent. This is working out. This is like going to the gym, guys. But it doesn't have to be a drudgery. It could be a fun thing. I don't know about you, but I get cool stuff when I read the Bible. He speaks to me. How about you? He speaks to you. You just flip it open and he'll say something to you. You know, I mean, it just... Ask him, you know, get involved with our, all of your reading through the Bible, through our Bible program we have online in 25 plus languages on, online, different languages. Strong spirit. And you know, I could keep going on, but I have a feeling that some people need to hear this. The strength of your spirit will get you to the next point in your life. And it's important for you to get with the Lord and not be out too ahead of him or not going down the, the don't go down the wrong road, guys. You have a call of God on your life. What's that mean? God has given you abilities and talents that we all need. Whether you're a businessman, whether you're an engineer, whether you're a college professor, whether you're a mom, whether you're a dad, whether you're a grandma, whether you're a grandpa, anything. You know, if you're a tribe leader in Africa, if you're one of the tribe leaders, God wants you strong so you can lead that tribe and be a good leader. Amen? So strength of spirit covers so many different dimensions. This is a huge subject, and I just give you like a little, tiny little bit of it today. And that's why I came in so strong, because I want you guys to get it. Now, let's say this. This is uh, Psalm 1832. I'm going to say a couple of scriptures now. And I just kind of want you to, to meditate on them. We're going to say a couple of things from them. But Psalm 1832 says this, For it is God that girds me with strength and makes my way perfect. It is God that girds me with strength and makes my way perfect. The Living Bible says, He fills me with strength and protects me wherever I go. God fills me with strength. Say that. God fills me with strength. Say that. God fills me with strength. Close your eyes if you have to. God fills me with strength. God fills me with strength. God fills me with strength. This just doesn't make sense to me. Listen, you're sitting in a chair for an hour. If you did this for an hour versus worrying about something for an hour, you're going to get strong. I, this is something I do. This is something I have to do. In fact, a couple of weeks ago, I had to get in strength scriptures for myself. I felt really weak. I felt like there was just stuff. And I had to get into strength scriptures. I even looked at our, our, our strength scriptures that are online, that the YouTube channel and a video on, I just goes over and over and over three times, goes through 30 of them. I just had to do that. God makes you strong. 27.1 says this. Let me say this. God makes you strong. Say that. God makes me strong. Say it again. God makes me strong. I should take a load off of you. Hallelujah. You're doing a spiritual exercise when you do this. 
Psalm 27, 1, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Close your eyes and say this. The Lord is the strength of my life. Let's say it again. The Lord is the strength of my life. One more time. The Lord is the strength of my life. I know so many of these, I can just go off on them now. <laughs> He's the strength of our life. You think this will affect my physical body? Yes, it will affect your physical body. It will affect your organs. It'll affect your bloodstream. It'll affect your brain cells. Listen, scientists talk about subcorks. Subcorks are, are, are molecules that, that make up all the matter. They're right here. They're all over the place. And what they do, as soon as a sound hits them, they come alive and they produce whatever that sound is shooting towards whatever they are asking. It's, it's a whole scientific fact. So when you say, I am sick, every year I get the flu, man, those subcorks are working for you. Look it up for yourself. It's quantum physics. Look up quantum phys physics and look up subcourse. You can study it out for yourself. I'm not a scientist. <laughs> but I'll tell you another, there's so many good materials out there. And it's funny to see how many scientists now are coming to the Lord Jesus Christ. It's amazing. You know, we knew a few years ago that no one before 1950, everybody say 1950, 1950. could have wrote the Bible. And the 20 different facets of creation and get them all perfectly right. Nobody before 1950 could have wrote it. Well, I think it was written a lot longer before that. But scientists are now coming to the Lord Jesus Christ because even the Darwin theory doesn't even make sense to scientists now. They said they could this regeneration. It's, it's, there's, there's a whole bunch of that I don't want to get into. You can get, get online. You can study out for yourself. So scientifically, when you speak, things are happening. You're, 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 you're saying your future. You're saying your future. You're saying your future. I remember being on a ranch, and my mom says, our horses never get sick. Our horses are always well. Our horses, they never get sick. They never get sick. They never get sick. And that's when I was a kid about this tall. That's why I got that I never get sick from. And I was wondering why everybody in school was getting sick except for me. The flu hit the whole school, David. Why aren't you sick? You need to go to the office. I didn't go to the office. I'm not sick. <laughs> and, we, and why that ranch? That ranch is prospering over there. I wonder why. I wonder why those horses never got sick. I wonder why those horses had no problems. I'm just, I'm just, I mean, guys, you have this in your own life. You can see this happen in your own life. Yes. And it's something we always have to look at. I have to look at it daily for myself. What am I saying? And you know what? You don't have to get in condemnation about it. This isn't some like, like formula. This is real from the heart. With the, with the mouth, confession is made out of the heart. You know? Hallelujah. It's all about the heart. Why do you go over this stuff so much? Because guys, I'm telling you, Jesus went over faith and the speaking so many times. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God, Pastor David. Where are you at? I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm probably over time by now. Glory to God. I'll tell you what. When I was a Buddhist, I went to a Buddhist temple and these guys were all like, oh, there's the priest, there's the priest. And I'm like, yeah, there's the priest. I'm sorry, I'm just like me. I'm sorry, I just, I, just, I don't, I, 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 I just, I, it's hard to impress me sometimes. So anyway, there's the priest, there's the priest, so there's the priest, big deal. Do you know that there was a huge fire out here and he walked out and he spoke to that fire and told it to stop and it stopped dead and it reversed and went the other way. I was like, so? I mean, that's pretty amazing, I guess. That was before I was a Christian. And then I was a Christian and I'm looking in the Bible and looking at the authority and Jesus spoke to the wind and I'm like, wait a minute. And then I was in Oklahoma, in Tulsa, Oklahoma and there's this tornado coming through town and I, was, I saw it, it was right there above me. I can almost tell you it was off 71st Street and Memorial. And I can tell you exactly where it was, was coming down off there and I said, oh no you don't. You get that stupid dark cloud back up in the sky because it is not gonna touch here and touch any of these people. And that thing went, Shh. I've seen these things. You can't talk me out of these things. And I've held back for years, but I'm not holding back anymore. 
We need to help a whole lot of people take their place and take their authority in Jesus Christ, stand on their feet and say, I am a daughter of God. I am a child of God. I am a man of God. And I refuse to be ashamed to be a child of God. We cannot be ashamed of the gospel of Lord Jesus Christ because it's the power unto salvation. Yes. Amen? Amen? I'll say it again. It's the power unto salvation. Yes. Right with the whole world, the Bible says, is waiting for the sons and daughters to step up and take their place. The whole world, all creation, the Bible says. That's us. Where am I going today? I don't know, but I'll tell you what. You are stronger than you think you are. Rise up. Get that doubt, and you know there's only one person putting that doubt in your head. The doubter, the deceiver. Yeah. The devil, he's the master doubter. He'll doubt you every way possible and use everybody else to doubt you as well. Yeah. Hallelujah. Where is this going? I have no idea. <laughs> but hopefully it helps somebody. Amen? And get you, and this is all, get you to Jesus, get you in the Word of God, get you strong so the Holy Spirit can help you and knock junk out of your life so you can be restored. Come on. Yes. I refuse to people say, even in this town, and, and you, know, you know where you're from, wherever you're from, oh, you know, you shouldn't speak in tongues. <laughs> it's not part of the Bible. Really? Don't get me on that. Well, you know, God sent sickness. No, he didn't. From book to book, you read it yourself. Mm -hmm. One end to the other. We already talked about that last week. Glory to God. I got I to gotta wrap it up here. Psalm, where are we at? <laughs> you're strong, you're strong, you're strong. And go all these scriptures, but you are stronger and stronger and stronger. I remember saying it when I had to lift 400 pounds, 400 bales a day, all 110 pounds, and I'd do the hay trucks, and I'd do two of those, 800. And I would, I would always say to myself, and they'd be looking at me and say, I'm a one-man army. I can handle that. It wasn't my strength. I just believed my spirit came alive and enlightened me to have more strength. What did Samson do? Study out Samson, guys. Study out his words, guys. Not to get in there right now. Psalm 71, 16. I will go in the strength, man, when people say, man, you can't make it. You're not going to be able to go move to that place. You might be moving to a village or a city. You might be starting a family. You might be starting a business. You might be starting something. And everybody's like, you can't do that. No, I will go. Or right here, if you're right here in the YouTuber. I will go in the strength of, I will go. Everybody say, I'll go. I will go. I will go. I will go. I will go. When it looked impossible for us to move to Poland, we said to each other, we will go in the strength of the Lord God. I don't know how, I don't know where, but we're going to go. Right. And we stepped out and go. I will make mention of your righteousness and yours only. Next scripture, Psalm 84, 7. They go from strength to weakness. Each appears before the God of Zion. No, no. You didn't catch that? <laughs> They go from strength to 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 strength. Glory to God. And then strengthen again. That's what the Bible says when your body says, because it's not your body that's saying it, usually. It's the devil saying it like, you're not going to make it. You're not going to make it. You know you can't walk tomorrow. You, you're not even going to walk tomorrow. No. I go from strength to strength. Amen. Another scripture, I go from increase to increase. Mm -hmm. Nothing's going to stop you guys. You have a, I'll, I'll get into a whole other subject about your will and the strength God has given to your will to produce things. Don't even go and get on that. We're talking spiritual strength here. Next scripture. Psalm Oh, we'll go to Ephesians 6, 10. We'll end it. We'll do this one. There's so many strength scriptures, guys. Just meditate, 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 meditate. I will go from strength to strength. That last verse says this. They will grow constantly in strength. They will grow constantly in strength. That's Psalm 84, 7, the Living Bible. They will grow constantly in strength. They will go stronger as they go. Hallelujah. I don't care what you're facing in your life. I don't care what you're dealing with in your life. You'll get through it. You'll be able to go with God. Yes. Period. Yeah. 
He's all of our strength. I'm not your strength. He's your strength. He's your Lord. He's your master. Amen. You're just getting out of hand. Watch me. <laughs> Ephesians 6.10. Finally, my brethren. Finally, David. No, finally, my brethren. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Don't get me on the spirit of might. That's in Isaiah 61.1. And when Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, he didn't finish that verse from Psalm 61. It wasn't necessary for him to do that, but it talks about the spirit of might shall rest upon him. If the spirit of might is resting on the body of Christ and the head of Christ and the body of Christ, then the spirit of might rests in the church. Oh man, don't get me on Elijah right now, guys. We're seeing it all over the world. Mm, don't get me on Elijah right now. Hallelujah. Don't get me on Elijah. Glory to God. Bible prophesies and talks about the, the, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ as like Elijah in the earth. Mm -hmm. That's right. Shh. Glory to God. Well, I'm just not a believer. Well, I don't care. I wasn't, I wasn't a believer either. But you can be a believer today. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Strong in the Lord and the power of his might. I'm strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Let's say that. I am strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Say it again. I am strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Say it again. I am strong in the Lord and the power of his might. One more time. I am strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Glory to God. Say I'm strong. Say, I'm strong in the Lord. I'm strong in the Lord. I call my body strong. I call my kidney strong. Somebody out there. I call my stomach strong. Stomach strong. Say it again. I call my stomach strong. I call my lungs strong. I call my heart strong. I call my digestive system strong. Jesus name I call my immune system I call my immune system I call my immune system strong in the Lord and the power of his might in Jesus name my blood is strong my bones are strong my eyes are strong my feet are strong my knees are strong my blood is strong I'm going to say that again my blood is strong Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say that again. My blood is strong. My blood is Say it again. My blood is strong. My blood is strong. My blood is strong. In the Lord and the power of his might. Woo! Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Strength from strength to strength to strength. I will go in the strength of the Lord. I go from strength to strength to strength to strength to strength. I don't care what faces me. I will go in the strength of the Lord Jesus Christ. I go from strength to strength. He fills me. The first one, he fills me. He fills me. He fills me with strength. Another translation, Psalm 80. He fills me with strength and I go into the battle. Why do you go into the battle? Because, man, I've got the strength of the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you for today's message. Hallelujah. Very different today, Father. Thank you, Lord. We love you and we praise you. We give you all the glory and all the prayer, all the praise. Thank you, Father, that true joy in our lives is following Jesus Christ. And if you haven't made Jesus Christ, everybody just keep your head bowed real quick. If you have never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, in Romans 10, 9, it says this. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You will be saved. Well, I don't need to be saved. You need to be more saved than you think. If you're a spirit, you're going to step out of your body. You better be saved. Hallelujah. And if you don't, if you need any more information on that, just come to me or, or, or email us and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Hallelujah. Well, you can look up here right now. Let's, let's raise one hand to heaven and affirm and reaffirm our commitment to Jesus Christ today. Hallelujah. And say these words, Father God, I believe in you. I believe in your son, Jesus, that he died on the cross 
And he paid the full price for all my sins. Jesus, I accept your sacrifice. Jesus, I confess you as the Lord of my life. Jesus, from this day forward, I will serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. If you've said that or prayed that and spoke that from your heart today, reach out to us here. Let us know. You know, just come up and we want to share some things with you. We want to hug you. We want to talk to you. If you're online and you're watching this on, on our online church or if you're on YouTube, Daily Motion, any of the other social media us, uh, sites that we have and we, we support, listen, just go on to believersinternational.church. Go to Brand New to Jesus. And I'll tell you what, you're going to see lots of great stuff on there to help you. And also at the bottom, email us. We want to keep in touch with you. We want to be able to pray with you. Any prayer requests you have. We also have lots of study materials, hundreds of different books and study materials. We put a whole one on women this week. We put three new books on women this week. We put another book on the blood of Jesus Christ this week. There's a lot of great things for you to, to really, and they're all free. You don't have to sign up for anything. You just go straight on there. You have to log on to anything. They're just free for the public and free for our believers to use. Well, guys, this is the end of the service. I found it a little bit long today, but guys, thank you for joining us today. Guys, we're going to say for the kingdom in just a second. It was on my heart to talk about uh, Colossians chapter 3 verse 17 says this and this is why we say for the kingdom every week let every detail in our lives words actions whatever be done in the name of the master Jesus thanking God the Father every step of the way that's how we do it guys we do it for the kingdom of God and we love Jesus Christ and guys we love you on the count of three for the kingdom one two, three, for the kingdom. Have a great week, guys. Stay strong in the Lord. Listen to this message over and over, and you'll get more and more out of it, and you keep yourself spiritually strong. We love you guys. Reach out to us if you need anything. We love you guys. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father.